Pastel Munchen has he scored the second goal against Manstein City, giving them a one goal lead. Ryo takes a look over to Sagi and says that Sagi is more and more becoming like a monster. After that, Ryo thinks back to the time Nagi chose to go with Sagi instead of him. Ryo says that he never wants to be the guy who doesn't get chosen and wants to avoid experiencing the feeling ever again. Ryo also says that it wasn't Nagi's fault and it was him that needed to change. He ends it all with saying that he needs to show the world that Ryo Mikagi can fight by himself. But just then, Nagi comes forward telling Ryo that he wants to beat Usagi. He tells Ryo that right now he doesn't have a chance of beating Usagi and asks Ryo for advice before telling him that soccer isn't fun anymore. Ryo tells Nagi that he doesn't care anymore and that this is the path that Nagi shows himself. But after that, Nagi goes forward telling Ryo that playing alongside each other was fun. And when Ryo is just about to walk away, Nagi ends it by asking for Ryo's help. Ryo stops himself and asks Nagi if he ever thinks about others' feelings. He tells Nagi that he had to crawl up without being chosen many times over and when Ryo finally decided to keep fighting and get stronger on his own, that's when Nagi wants to come back. Ryo tells Nagi to stop talking to him as if he can manipulate his feelings with Nagi's ever-changing feelings. But Nagi tells Ryo that he has gotten it all wrong. He tells Ryo that ever since the day Ryo invited him to play football with him, Nagi has always been by his side and that Nagi always kept making the best choices to make the dreams come true. He tells Ryo that the two of them couldn't beat Usagi before, but now it's a different story as both of them have gotten a lot stronger. Ryo asks Nagi what his ego is, and Nagi tells him that it is their dream. After that, Ryo tells Nagi that he is a real pain before telling him to play soccer together. And with that, the game is back on. Agi has the ball and looks over at Usagi before saying that Usagi's moments have clearly leveled up from before, and that in this game, he's slowly becoming the eye of the storm. Agi also says that he wants Nagi to awaken and to take the next step but he doesn't get to say much more as Kunigami goes to block him. Agi tries to move Kunigami's center point to get behind him, but it doesn't work that easily. As Agi takes a look at the field and says that right now it's a bad idea to move, as Ryo, Shigiri and Kaiser are all on standby, and if he also went in, it would go into a 3 vs 3 situation. But just then, Isagi remembers the time between Noah and Lavinio, when Lavinio used Isagi as a tool to get behind Noah. Just then, Shigiri screams to Agi to pass him, but Isagi tells him that he moved too soon. As Isagi is going to steal the ball, he meets with Kaiser, who also had the same idea as Isagi. Please just take a quick moment of silence to Agi, who is to fall to the ground. Anyway, Isagi now knows that he made the correct decision and that his vision is in the same dimension as Kaiser's. The loose ball falls to Ryo, and Kaiser orders Ness to go steal it. With Ness coming up behind Ryo, he is forced to pass to Nagi. Ryo copies Itosi Sai's pass to make a one to with Nagi, who uses his back heel to get the ball over to Ryo. Agi goes over to Ryo and asks what he is doing. He tells Ryo that he is supposed to use Nagi in Ryo's own ideas, because if he do that, then Nagi's creativity won't flourish, but Ryo just tells him to shut up. Ryo is set on devoting his newly evolved chameleon style to help Nagi score. Ryo also thinks that it can be his gateway to enter his flow state. And with Nagi and Ryo once again teaming up, they're looking more dangerous than ever before. Isagi knows that to beat Ryo and Nagi, he will have to use his meta vision to predict the best place for them to reach. Kurna goes forward to stop Ryo but is faced with some high speed scissors which let him pass. After that, Nagi and Ryo use his one to pass once again to break through Boston Munch's defense. In the middle of their attacks, Ryo takes a moment to think back. He thinks about Nagi, the guy who was unmotivated and who thought that everything was a drag, to the Nagi now that says that he wants to have a dream. Ryo also thinks back to when he split up. Ryo admits that he was frustrated and that he resented Nagi but he still had the resolve to move on by himself. Ryo ends it with thanking Nagi and says that if they are together, they can achieve anything. Ryo passes the ball to Nagi, who jumps up and makes a double trap with his chest and leg. After that, the ball goes to Ryo, who right out of the bat passed it back to Nagi, who once again shows off his crazy football abilities. But behind Nagi, which is both Kaiser and Isagi, who read both Ryo's and Nagi's moments. But Nagi isn't faced as he passes the ball backwards to Ryo. Ryo has to decide if he wants to pass it behind Isagi or Kaiser, but in the end, he knows that there is only one way they can go. And that's of course behind Kaiser, so that Nagi is left with Isagi. Nagi traps the ball as it's going down, and he pretends to shoot, but Isagi was able to see it through with his meta vision. Isagi thinks that Nagi will do a two-stage fake volley, so he tries to stop him from getting into his position, but when he does so, he realizes that Nagi wasn't going to do his two-stage fake volley, but instead a regular fake volley. Kaiser goes to block Nagi but ends up getting hit by the same move Nagi used on Isagi. Isagi says that he can still manage to reach Nagi but when he goes in to take the ball, it doesn't end too well for him as he gets hit by another one of Nagi's fake volleys. As the ball is up in the air, Nagi thanks Isagi and tells him that he is now the best player in the world as he jumps up and shoots the ball into the net, making one of the craziest goals ever. As Nagi hits the ground, he screams out of happiness. 
Ryo also runs to him and makes a high five with the genius himself. As Nagi is walking, he says that he finally won and that he finally beat Usagi. After that, he says that winning sure feels good. And that's how Nagi became the best player in the world. And before you come at me, he said it himself, it's not my words. But honestly, when I say that this is one of my favorite moments in the series, I mean it. The way Nagi and Ryu completely broke through Buster Manjo's whole team by themselves was absolutely insane. And it feels so good to have Ryu and Nagi back on good terms again. Because even though how much I like Isagi's and Nagi's little bromance they had going on on the second selection arc, it doesn't come close to the real deal. And with Nagi making all kind of new traps and new feints, I'm really left wondering what's left for him. Because come on, he did 5 fake volleys in a row and also ended it with an insane goal. You can honestly name the most impossible and mind breaking trap and Nagi will do it on his first try. I also really like the last panel where Nagi said that winning short feels good because it's such a good parallel to the chapter where he says that he hates to lose. Honestly, I could talk about this match forever but for your sake I will end it here. But in return I would like to hear what you thought about this match and what do you think is left for Nagi to even learn and what's next for him. And if you like blue lock and videos like this then I would highly suggest you to subscribe to the channel and while you're at it also leave a like and a comment as it helps out a ton with the algorithm. And if you're curious to see how Isagi surpassed both Rin and Shido then please watch a video which will be popping up on the screen right now. Anyway thanks for watching and have a great day, bye.